Hello everyone, Chaos here, and welcome to another old school RuneScape video. Today, my in depth Warden's Guide, the final boss in the Tombs of a Mascot. Raids 3 features a twin boss called the Wardens Tumikin's Warden and Elidnus's Warden. For simplicity's sake, I'll refer to them as left and right. Left being Tumicon and right being Elidnus, if you positioned your camera in a way where you have the obelisk in front of you and the entrance behind you. Anyway, when you run inside, just click on the red pillar and walk up to the ghost in front of the obelisk. When you're ready to go, right-click begin on the ghost. I will explain the first phase as I personally do it, but keep in mind that you can do the opposite by mirroring all of the movements you see in the video. When the fight starts, the obelisk will let out energy orbs going towards both of the wardens. This is going to charge them up and when a red circle under them fills up, they will do one of two attacks in a set rotation which I will talk about in a little bit. Stand on the left one for a few seconds to block some orbs, and stop the charge. As you're doing it, you will be slowly damaged, but you're good to go with about 10 or 15 orbs. If you did it like me, the first thing that will happen is that the Warden to the right will cover a checkered pattern of the arena in pyramids emitting red light. You obviously want to stay away from them. As you do so, remember to keep attacking the obelisk at all times. When the Warden to the left is charged up, the same thing will happen, but this time, the opposite tiles of the check pattern will emit a yellow light, heavily damaging whoever is standing under them. You can switch to ranged and to keep attacking the obelisk. The wardens will continue to charge, and for the second round, the warden to the right will throw out small red balls to everyone in the room. If you're in a group, you will have to stand away from each other until you take the hit and come back to the obelisk. The same thing will happen with the other warden, but this time, it will fire a big ball for which you will need to stand on the same tile to evenly spread out the damage. You can think of this as the Sodasek Ballroom. If you're doing solo runs, all you can do against these balls is pray and safe up as you continue to damage the obelisk. But as long as you correctly prevent the wardens from being synchronized, you will need to rinse and repeat this process until the obelisk reaches zero health. And of course, we can move on to the second phase of the fight. One of the wardens will walk down from its platform and start attacking. If you blocked the left warden, you will have to deal with the one on the right. Obviously, if you blocked the right warden, you will have to deal with the one on the left instead. To my knowledge, they are exactly the same fight, so no need to worry too much about it. But the order in which you choose will play a key role during the next and final phase of the fight. But more about that later. Equip your magic items if you blocked the warden on the left, or your ranged items if you blocked the warden on the right. When the wardens start moving, it will begin attacking. The magic attack will be a red skull, and the ranged attack will be a brown skull. You can react quicker to your prayer switches by focusing on movement. For the magic attack, it looks at its arm and then points it towards you. For the ranged attack, it quite literally looks like it's pitching a baseball. Move away from it and attack to avoid melee damage. At random points of the fight, the Warden will have two more attacks. One called Divine Projectile and one called Imprisonment. The Divine Projectile has a special sound and when it happens, it will fire a different attack which will disable your prayers. You will then have to pray according to what the projectile looks like. Pray melee for a Wraith Scimitar, pray ranged for a white arrow, and pray magic for a purple orb. The imprisonment attack looks like a black drop and will be fired to your current tile, so just walk away to ignore it. If you don't avoid it, you will be encased in stone and you won't be able to move for a few ticks. It is crucial to avoid this in order not to get hit by what's coming, as a combination can be quite deadly. If you thought the Wardens are the only ones with special attacks, well, we're not even halfway done. Also, at random points of the fight, the Obelisk itself will do one of the following three special attacks. The first one looks like a fan which will light up some tiles around the arena, so just keep running clockwise and obviously don't step on them. I actually can't tell you how I personally named this attack because it got one of my videos age-restricted and I have to re-edit it, re-upload it, and uh, please, don't say this on YouTube. The second one will make diagonal lines pop up from the outer edges of the arena and will travel towards the obelisk in an X shape. You can go to some safe tiles near the obelisk. The final attack will let out some red skulls that look like the Warden's magic attack, and wherever they land they will deal an area of effect damage in a 7x7 square around them. You can see where the skulls are going to land, following by their shadows. Remember you have to be damaging the Warden as you both pray against its attacks, while also avoiding the Obelisk attack, which can get a little chaotic, but as long as you practice, it's all good to go. Also, big big tip, if you get hit by the Obelisk special attacks, your prayer is going to be disabled, so if you have to tank a hit, just be ready to turn them back on. When you damage the Wardens, you will notice a yellow bar on top of them, like the pillars in the Nightmare of Ashihama. When the bar fills up, 
the Warden will deactivate and their core will be exposed. Equip your melee gear and focus on the core since it will always do your max hit on it with melee. If you have a DDS and Adrenaline Potion, drink it and unload your DDS specials to deal a ridiculous amount of damage. If you have a BGS, do your 6th and final hit with it for some bonus damage, however keep in mind that this is tick perfect and you will have to be very fast. After a few seconds, the core will go back to the Warden and you will have to repeat the cycle. But this time, it will have to be with the other attack style opposite to what you are using. When you attack the core again and the Warden comes back up, you will have to attack it with magic. And obviously alternate between styles until you have done enough damage to the core for the Warden to die. Hopefully you still have some supplies on you because things are about to get even spicier. For the third and final phase of the fight, the other Warden will awaken and the arena is going to change. Equip your ranged gear preferably and get ready for your PVM abilities to be pushed to the absolute limit. In the first few seconds of the fight, the Warden will let out a shockwave that will make the floor damage you if you're standing in the area he targets. Again, for simplicity's sake, position your camera like this and I will refer to the arena as left, middle and right. Stand on the right side of the arena and start attacking. After the Warden targets the opposite side, go ahead and move to the left. After it targets that previous area, go and move to the exact middle tile since he will have now target both sides. Do this until enough damage has been dealt. When the Warden reaches 80, 60, 40 and 20% health, it will scatter red skulls with 1 HP around the arena. You can attack them one tick apart, making it super quick to deal with, but please do this with melee. The lower the health, the more skulls it will spawn. If you fail to kill them all quick enough, they will explode sending a shockwave throughout the arena, dealing a massive amount of damage, and most likely it's going to one-hit KO you. At both 60 and 40% HP, spirits of the previous bosses will come to aid the Warden in battle. This is why choosing the Warden during the first phase of the fight is important. If you block to the Warden to the left, Zabak and Baba come back as spirits to attack you as well. If you block to the Warden on the right, Akka and Kefri will show up instead. They will all deal their usual attacks, so choose whichever one you feel more comfortable with. In my very honest opinion, it is a lot easier to deal with the first group, because if you have Aerial Assault active for Kefri, her fireball attack will do a 3x3 area of effect damage, and it's slightly more difficult to deal with, especially during the last portion of the fight. Anyway, you will have to deal with both the ground shockwaves and the spirit attacks which will be somewhat manageable. At 20% health, the Warden will let out its final set of skulls, and after you finish them all and deal just a little bit more damage, it will heal back to around 20% health and the entire arena will be covered with red lightning. You will then have to dodge the spirits and the new attacks as you damage the Warden. I highly recommend you save at least two doses of Ambrosia for this since it can get extremely overwhelming. The tiles at the back of the arena will start disappearing, leaving you with less and less room to work with. If you take long enough you will be left with a single row of tiles to attack from, and I have only experienced this one and died quite quickly. So hurry up with the damage and avoid being in the situation. If you dodge all of the attacks and deal enough damage, the second Warden will eventually reach 0 HP and you will have completed your first two tombs of a Masked Run. Click on the white crystal that just spawned and go to the treasure room to claim your spoils. Once here, you can check out this panel to see stats like overall MVP, damage dealt and of course some fun titles for your team. When you walk up to the chest, the one with the spinning key will be yours to take. What we are looking for is a purple chest which will be available to collect from the big sarcophagus in the middle of the room. The player with a chest without a key will be the proud recipient of a unique item from the tombs of a mascot. Once you claim your rewards, talk to the ghost to leave, and then gear up once again to increase the difficulty and find your skill limit to then push it even further. As we did with all previous bosses, what about the invocations that will shake things up during the final fight? Ancient Haste will make it so the Wardens charge faster in the first phase of the fight, and I personally avoid this one because the damage you take from the orbs can be quite overwhelming. Acceleration will make it so the Wardens attack quicker and the Obelisk charges faster for the second phase of the fight, but it's honestly not that bad. Penetration will make the Obelisk attacks more potent, but you can easily avoid all of them, so this is also free points if you have a good movement. Overclock to 1 and 2 will make it so the Warden attacks much faster during the final phase of the fight, so you have a lot less time to react to the floor shockwaves. And for the absolute pro gamers out there, Insanity makes the Warden in the third phase much stronger, the floor shockwaves will be much faster, there's less time to react to all of the red skulls, the floor attack will change patterns and not reset, lightning will be a lot faster, and the tiles will disappear much faster as well. 
Safe to say, if you clear a run with this invocation active, regardless of the difficulty, you are an absolute machine. And of course, the time for some extra tips for the final fight. For the Obelisk, I like to do a few BGS specs to weaken it in order to deal more damage and get it over with quicker because it can get pretty messy. However, of course, you want to save your special attack for the core if you have a DDS. Apparently, you can also safe spot the pyramid attacks by standing next to the wardens, but I don't really recommend it since it will waste a lot of time. I believe that's pretty much it since I didn't want to leave out any crucial tip outside of the main explanation, so we can wrap it up here. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it for the most in-depth The Tombs of a Mascot guides you will ever see on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching and of course for making it this far. If you did, leave a comment saying Crocodile and along with your opinion on The Tombs of a Mascot. I will pick a random comment with a keyword on Friday and you will win a bond as I get in contact with you in the comments. I want to give a massive thank you to all my channel members, you boys and girls are absolute legends. You can click the join button below to further support this channel and see all of the cool perks and rewards you can get out of your monetary pledge in the videos, in the live streams, and of course in the Discord. In the next one I have no idea what I'll be doing as I'm absolutely mentally drained after writing this script with like 13,000 words, but I can guarantee it will be a good one. You have an amazing day, have an amazing week, and I will see you then. Ba -ba -ba -ba. A pace.